Welcome to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet. And welcome to the Good Karma Success Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Melinda Van Fleet. Well, happy Thanksgiving, Captain Ryan. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Yay! It's going to be a lobster and stone crab Thanksgiving at the Van Fleet household. <laughs> and shrimp spicy cheese dip <laughs> that is like calorie free. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. I know. I'm not really a big fan of turkey, so I've never happened. So, and I remember when we met, and you told me that I was like, "Yes," because I, I don't really like it either. Yeah, I never really liked turkey, and and I just liked all the sides. And turkey just, and then I have to smother with dressing to make oh, it taste good for and me. And I don't even like any of that. It's all so, about the Jello and the Cool Whip, which I can eat plenty of now. So yeah. it's not any big deal. <laughs> as an adult, you can have as much Jello and Cool Whip yeah. as you want. And you should definitely have sugar-free Jello and sugar-free Cool Whip and save on the sugar. Yeah. So I got a pile of Stonies I'm going to eat. Yes. Yeah, so shout out to Ernie for that. Yeah. That's shout awesome. out to my buddy Ernie. So. So we are going to talk about a pretty big word today on the podcast, and it's a word that I don't believe you and I, in our over two years of podcasting together, have had a discussion about, and it keeps popping up. It's the craziest thing, and I always believe and know that when something keeps popping up, it's meant to be shared, it's meant to be thought about more, it's meant to be discussed, and that word is Failure, Captain Ryan. Failure. Ugh. It's and, like uh, everybody, everybody interprets failure in different ways. Mm-hmm. And to me, failure is not taking action. To me, that's failure. <laughs> really, when you don't take action and you don't do something, that is failure. You're not even giving yourself a chance. Right. So how this started popping up was when I interviewed Jamie and Joshua McNew, who own Jake Kindred here in the Keys. It's a hair salon, and it's where I get my hair cut. Jamie cuts my hair. And if you follow me, you know I have been writing more for our local paper, which is in print and online, called Upper Keys Weekly. And a few months ago, I started picking up doing interviews, which Jim, the editor, had asked me if I wanted to pick up some extra articles and he needed some help with interviews. So anywho, so I interviewed Jamie and Josh and they were sharing their story and it was kind of similar in the way of Ryan and I's from 2009 in that failure wasn't an option. And that's what she said. <laughs> she, Josh had bought the business right after Irma which if anyone knows what happened to us here in South Florida in the Keys, Hurricane Irma really, really crushed us, to be honest. And here is someone buying a business, right? Like right after this major hurricane that was devastating to our community. And then Jamie ended up deciding to quit her very good job to, you know, work with him side by side. And she just said, you know, failure wasn't an option. And it's just so true. And that's how we felt when we moved down here and started over from scratch. You know, we didn't talk about failure. We just knew that we were hard workers and we had huge faith in ourselves and in God and we would figure it out. We never talked about failure. It just wasn't one of those things. It never really came. It didn't come up at all, actually. Yeah. If anything, it came up with where we could feel energy from other people. Right. And then we managed, you know, Ryan and I would talk about that in terms of them and either like cut ties with them or speak to them less is really how we had to manage that. But we didn't have that as fear between us. We just rolled up our sleeves and kept going, taking action and, you know, not every day was sunshine and rainbows, as I say at the beginning of my podcast intro, but we we just accepted that. Like, we just accepted that, and we just kept going, and we never really thought about failure. It, was, it wasn't it was an option. No. No, it wasn't. And a lot of people, you know, when I – it's it, – it, a lot of people have short-term memories. We, you know, we went through – when we came down here, this place was a ghost town. Oh, the re- my gosh. The recession – the real estate market crash, uh, and a lot of you know everybody has, tends to have short term memories, and they don't remember that. But you know that's when I started my business is during the during the first big recession. So the keys is nothing like it, it's it's crazy how it's rebounded and and th- times have changed, but in just a short period of time. But 
you know, it's, this place was a ghost town. Mm-hmm. So a lot of business, we had the, the oil spill happened around the same yeah. time yep. that scared everybody away. The media, like the media really like ripped on the keys with that. So, and along with Irma, you know, it's like everybody said the keys was no more. It was really, the media really went after it. So, and it really hurt us. Mm -hmm. So the golf spill, the golf spill, then you had Irma and you had all that stuff to it. So yeah, it was, it was just, um, failure wasn't an option. Yeah. But where I started to think about it is, you know, if you would have, let's say shared your dream, like I wasn't on board, let's say, right. I could have easily poked a gazillion holes in it because number one, we were already in our mid thirties. Yep. You didn't know how to sport fish. <laughs> you were fishing on, you know, rivers and lakes up nope. in the Midwest. No idea. No clue. We didn't own a boat. You didn't have family that was in the business. And we'd never even been here and we didn't have any money. And now we're, you know, we were like starting something from scratch Mm -hmm. again, right after a recession in the sport fishing capital of the world, like the most competitive cutthroat place in one of the craziest business models you can possibly imagine. People have no frigging clue. And I could have said no. I could have said no. We're going to fail. Like this is, doesn't make sense. This is stupid. Like get a real job, do something else, right? But it wasn't. We just kept going. Yeah, we just did it. <laughs> I know. I mean, Call us crazy, I guess. But it it kind of came to light yesterday when I had a conversation with a very close friend of mine who I love from with all my heart. So this is nothing negative about the conversation at all. But it really made me bring it full circle again. I was like, okay, this keeps popping up as a topic. And she had said something to me asking me a question about failure. And my soul was like, yeah, no, like I, I don't fail like this, not an option. And then she was talking about a friend of hers and a business idea. And I was like, you know, how, how does anyone know? Right. You really don't know until you try, you don't know until you try. And failure is not trying. Failure is, is not giving it a shot. We, you know, we have one life to live, basically. Let's put it that way. And if you don't try things and take action and work towards something, then you you have no idea. And that's really the ultimate failure. That's yep. the ultimate failure. That's the ultimate failure. Because then you live your life with regrets. So if you had this dream in your heart to be a charter boat captain, and then you never did it, and then all of a sudden you're, you know, 85 years old. That would be the failure. Yeah. And I just went fishing. I mean, I had those days. You know, I'd have days where I'd be like, oh, my gosh, you know, I think I would fail. But I didn't really fail because I caught fish. <laughs> so, <laughs> when you went fishing with, like, what you mean? Like, when I, with, when I started my business. Right. When you just. Yeah. And you had lots of people make comments and I, you didn't even care. And I didn't like, even care. I just was like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to go fishing, you know. And um, and then I would see, I would be coming back to the dock and and then the other guides would be like, well, how'd you do that? Like I would like pull up and then there's, there was a sporty that used to sit next to me at the marina years ago. And he's like, how did you catch those fish today? And I would be like, I just went fishing, man. I just kind of, yeah. yeah, I just knew I set up here and figured it out. And he looked at me like I was like absolutely insane mm-hmm. because nobody else caught any fish. And then I was like, huh, I'm not like – then I looked at it in a different way. Mm-hmm. So I, I looked at it from a science point of view and I know I talked about that a lot and a lot of people talk to me about it, about science and how I approach fish. And I just say, hey, you know, it's nature. Uh, yeah. So that's the way I look at it. So You know, it's interesting because often – and we've kind of really proven this. It's, it's something we – in hindsight, I wish actually would document it, but how many times someone comes on a charter with super high expectations and they're antsy, impatient, all the things, and then those are the trips that are the hardest in the terms hardest. of catching fish. Right? Yeah, the hardest it's trips. It's kind of like they're manifesting failure. Yeah, they want bad really, things to happen. Really, when you think about them. it, they're manifesting failure instead of just going with the flow, having a fun time. Not putting like grandiose expectations out there, not looking at their watch, 
looking at the other person. You know, I hear all the stories. Don't kid yourself. I know. I hear it. I've seen it myself because, remember, I used to be the mate. So I see it. I get it. And that is kind of setting yourself up for failure on a fishing charter, right? It is, especially with the the new one. Like, it's just it's interesting. And the, the charter boat fishing world's changed a lot as far as the clientele goes to and demands and and stuff. And I'm not going to get into that today, but um, the worst for new clients, for, your yeah. existing clients, so. yeah. My existing not, clients, you know, yeah. My existing you know. clients that have been fishing with me for a, for a long time get it. And they've seen my changes over the years as far as how I've had to learn to adapt to the fishery to make it more successful for them because they see changes. Mm-hmm. And then I teach them the changes and why I'm doing things differently, and, and then they, they get it. So uh, it's just a lot of the new people I'm seeing right now. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's important to know that when you do something in your life, take out the time take out the how is this going to happen or when is it going to happen when's the fish going to jump like just go with the flow and do it like just right. just have fun just do what captain ryan says to do if he says real efficient real efficient right yep. just do the action and be like in a positive place and then you won't have the failure. Like it just doesn't happen, people. Like it just you're not bringing it to you if it's not something that you're thinking about. You're just doing the positive thing and working towards success. I mean, it's really simple, <laughs> but people have a hard time doing it. It's but hard. it is really simple. Right. It was simple for us. Like yeah. I, I never even like questioned failure. Like it wasn't. It just wasn't a thing. And even as like we pivot and change and do stuff all the time. I, I don't think, what if I fail? Now, if I sat here like an idiot and, and made my human brain continue to think that way, sure. But I don't do that and you don't either. No. Nope. No, I just, every day I, I, I work on just saying, hey, you know, how can I be better? How yeah, can I be how better? How can you be better? Every day. You do. You've always done that. Every, oh my gosh, every, always. Every morning I get up. And that's what I do. It's not like that's probably your mantra. What you've all you have always done that yep. you really have every day. And and then the hardest part for me is I just can't control the outer, you know, the out the outside things. Right. So but you can do your best to control the inside, but I can control the inside. And then just let go of the outside because you can't control it. I right. mean, it goes back to the serenity prayer. I mean, yep. That's like, it. Let's be real, you, you people. Know? Like you can only control what you can control. I know. I was like, <laughs> I'd go the other day. I'm like, we're grouper fishing, and I was like, well, the groupers are going to bite here at this time, and and they they did. They bit at the exact time I told the guys. They looked at me like I was crazy, but they they started biting, and I said we we're going to get two bites, and we did get two bites, and one was eaten by a shark and the other one the, the guys just weren't quick enough to get on the rod and they rocked them up and that was it so we didn't get the fish so you couldn't control that but, but you did your it. best to control what you could up until that point yep. so but i knew when we were going to get the bites i did everything right and nothing wrong it's just it's just like hey you know it's like wahoo fishing i say they're going to bite here and there they bite but i tell the client hey the fish still has to stay on the hook and he still has to get hit with the gaff <laughs> and come in the boat. We get the bites, and sometimes they stay on the hook, and sometimes they fall off the gaff. <laughs> so. This is why I laugh, like when anyone's like, "Oh, it's so easy." It's so Let's easy. Why the dream? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh god, yeah, no, no. And then sometimes it just haunts me, and I just like I've I've had to learn to shake that because I've had you've gotten better. I've gotten better at it because certain things would haunt me, and like ah. Uh, you know, and like you just can't shake things. So, and it just, it is what it is. So I've just learned too that I've tried to change for people over the years and it's just best just to be who I am. And I'm, I'm a very aggressive fisherman when it comes to putting clients on fish. I'm laid back. But when it, when it's t- when it comes time to go to work, it's time to go to work. So Ernie can't, one of my, um, one of my buddies, you know, he's like, it's like comes from like the hard work to growing up, you know, you're like always trying to like work and get better and in athletic sports, you know, it's the same drive. Right. So always try to improve your technique. True. Very true. So yeah, so that's kind of it for the day. We were talking about this and we thought that we would make this our topic heading into the 
new month as people are thinking about the end of the year and maybe working on their businesses and their lives. And there's a lot going on out there. So I definitely am sending everyone that's going through changes. Um, I actually think this year has probably been a lot harder for people than last year because it's kind of like the aftermath of COVID. Like it's this aftermath of what happens, right? As as the dust settles. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. As the dust settles. Thank you so much for that. And um, yeah, so I, I've we've all been there. I mean, everyone kind of knows that we've had mechanical issues in Ryan's arm and you know, it's just been one of those years for lots of people. And so on this Thanksgiving, just be grateful for what you do have. I do believe that even if things are really, really, really dark for you, there's something to be grateful for. So if you have to be grateful for nachos and cheese, like Ryan was when we got laid off because he couldn't think of anything else, <laughs> then be grateful for nachos and cheese. Yep, nachos and cheese. <laughs> nachos and cheese. And be grateful for at least like, but you had some nachos and cheese or you had a beer or something. I don't yeah. know. You have a cute dog and you can give it a hug, like yep. whatever. Just be grateful for that. think of something. So, so, yeah. So, Ryan, you have that captain's program. You want to talk about that really yeah, quick? Yeah. You know, I put together, we put together a captain's program. This is a next level course. Uh, there's a lot to it. Uh, basically it just in a, to sum it up, if you're looking to start a business or an existing captain that wants to get there quickly, um, then this is, this is a program for you. Now it is an investment and so it's, there's more that I can talk about. Yep. So people should just email Ryan, good karma, Ryan at gmail.com. And then I'm in the middle of launching a six week group coaching program that kicks off November 30th and beyond basic and definitely reach out to me. And in my podcast, there will be information in the show notes if you're listening to the good karma success coach. So yeah, so we'll just keep that tight. But we have lots of things going on. So we can help others and their journey. As uh, yeah, as we're getting close to 2022, let's yeah. do it now, people. Let's get going now. Don't think about failure. Think about success, and you will achieve it as well. So that's all I got. Thank yeah. you for listening. That's it. That's all I got, guys. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Good Karma Sport Fishing underscore FL Keys, and you can find Melinda at Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. On Instagram, it's Melinda underscore Van Fleet. So. Yeah. That's it, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. And remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good. Thanks for listening.